Let's get to our best bets. We're going to have a friendly contest this season between us to see who ends up with the crown of winning the most best bets this year. Again, these are wagers that we have made uh, and we are heavy into. I know I am for mine. I think you are as well. What's your best bet of the week? I'm looking at the TCU team total over 41 and a half against Colorado. We kind of eviscerated Colorado's roster and Sammy P went into detail as to some of the problems that they have on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, their defensive line, I think, is going to struggle. I think they have issues in the secondary as well. I think the, I think the TCU wide receiver room has caught the eye of the Colorado defensive coaching staff, and, and I think they're kind of reevaluating what they're going to do on both sides of the ball because I think there was some reports that Travis Hunter was going to play wide receiver, and I think now he might be playing – defensive back now instead. So it, it has a wide range of effect on the, uh, on the Colorado game plan here. So I, there were people last year that thought Chandler Morris was better than Max Duggan and he should have been the guy. And then Duggan took, took over uh, for, for, for Morris after he got hurt in that Colorado game. So yes, they lost Quinton Johnson and a bunch of other offensive weapons. I think the wide receiver room with, 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 uh, with JP Richardson coming in from Oklahoma state and some other guys, I think they're going to be fine and they're going to put up a bunch of points. I, I just, we, we talked before about how team playing together, knowing where guys are going to be. That's not the case with Colorado. You got a bunch of new guys who didn't even play together in the spring. And now you're going on the road yeah. in a hundred degree heat, facing that offense and coming off of a, an embarrassing loss in the national championship game. They're going to, they're going to be out to put up whatever number they can. I think a game, I think in the fifties is a, is a, is a very good possibility here. So I am a, uh, I'm going TCU over 41 and a half is my best bet. I think it's important to note. I think Sammy mentioned this, you better mentioned this earlier as well, is that teams are going to try to run the score up on Colorado the entire season, right? It's just the nature of the program that, that Dion is building in Colorado. He's, he's very loud. He's very in your face. He's very boisterous. He's getting, he's, he's yelling about recruits coming to him all the time. Like those are good things for the Colorado program. They're great to build that program. However, Opposing coaching staffs view that as a negative, right? That he's hogging their attention, that he's talking before he's winning, and they're going to try to score as many points and win by as many points as possible each and every week until Colorado obviously is good enough to compete against those teams. So if TCU's up, you know, uh, of uh, uh, thirty-seven to seven in the fourth quarter, they're going to try to score again, Bear, and score again, and score it. again, and score again. Well, I gave my best bet. Yes. What, what, what's your best bet? I'm gonna I'm gonna toot my horn for a second. Everyone knows your credentials, right? You are the bear. You're you're Chris Felicia. Oh. You're the bear. You've been on television for so many years. ESPN.com. I'm glad you're here I'm now. I'm sorry for that. Fox, it's fantastic. It's great. You 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 won for so many years. What I do best is wager on the Pac-12. I do Pac-12 radio. It's been my job for you five do. years now. I'm very good at wagering the Pac-12. I'm going to give you a Pac-12 wager each and every weekend. You may not like it, but I'm going to win you a lot of money. I'm, I'm going first to a game that no one's going to watch. I do not care. It's on 7 o'clock on Saturday on CBS Sports Network. Take a peek at it. It's Washington State at Colorado State. I have the under here of 54 and a half. This is ticked down a little bit from about 57. But Colorado State last season, guys, average, what I have right here. 13.2 points per game, um, and they return most of their offense from last year. You can make the case, obviously, they'll get a little bit better. But what does Wazoo do best? They play defense. They're a fantastic defensive team. And last season, they dominated, dominated bad offenses when when when, when they had a chance. On the flip side, Colorado State's defense last year only allowed 4 point eight yards per play. They were great last year. Washington State returns Cam Ward. I get that, Bear. But they have a new offensive coordinator, a new offensive line, an entire new wide receiver room as well. I think they struggle on offense in this game. They didn't play very well on the road last season as, as, as well. I like the under here. I think this game could be like 20 to 17 and cash pretty easy. Yeah, CSU, I think, has one of the better wide receivers in the league and one of the better def defensive linemen in the league as well. They were decimated by injuries to that quarterback position. I think Norvell inherited a mess uh, from the Adazio era. So I, I would look for some improvement from CSU this year. One question, though, about, about Washington State as it relates to the Pac-4, formerly the Pac-12. Do you think there will be any effect on the field for Stanford, Cal, Oregon State, Wazoo? Like, we're, we're the last four standing. What, what, is, what are we going to be looking like next year and the years coming? Are we going to be worrying about players leaving, uh, coaches 
do I want to coach here? Like, do you think any of that's going to kind of seep through to like on the field performance and maybe preparation in some of these games? Might, might, might those four teams be fade candidates early on, or might it be a situation where it kind of galvanizes a locker room and, and a team and be, hey, nobody wants us. We're, we're going to show them you probably should want us, or better yet, you're not going to want us because we're going to beat you. I don't think so. Um, I think it will matter for recruiting, which has, doesn't matter for this upcoming season, right? And, and, and it might matter for the longevity of the coaches. I think the one team it, it, it would affect the most is Oregon State, whose coach is fabulous. Jonathan Smith is an outstanding football coach. Mm -hmm. And if they cannot afford to pay him and they just gave him a new extension, which he definitely deserves, took it from a, a two-win team to a 10-win team, Bear, he's gone after the season. Like, he's absolutely gone out of Oregon. He doesn't want to leave. He Again, he played there. Like, he's a, an Oregon State guy. He built that program up from two wins to 10 wins last season. But if they go to the Mountain West, man, he's not staying. He's not staying in the Mountain West. And so I think that <laughs> that, that is the concern for Oregon State. I don't think concern for Washington State. Obviously, Stanford has a, has a new coach. I can see Wilcox at Cal, the wanting to get out of Cal if they end up going to the ACC. He's a really good football coach as well, but he's going to end up moving to the SEC or the Big Ten, who obviously have giant conferences as well. So I think Oregon State, for me, in the offseason – is the biggest concern for program changing because their coach doesn't want to coach a Mountain West. 